Hey everybody, this is Nelson Everhart, and you're back. You're back? Well, you're back, but I mean, I'm back. Probably why you are back. And this is another entry in a musical tour of The Spiral. However, we're not looking at Wizard 101 this time. There's been some interest in uh, looking at some Pirate 101 tracks from The Spiral as well, and I figured they're the same Spiral, so why not? Also, people have been asking for more combat tracks. So this is a combat track from Pirate 101. This is the Westminster Skyway combat track. Hopefully, uh, if you're a Wizard 101 player exclusively and haven't played Pirate 101, this will kind of be you know the same world as the Wizard 101 music, but maybe something you're a little less familiar with. It was written fairly early on in the process, and at the time, I don't think I was aware that the two uh, games kind of took place in the same general universe. Here's where I kind of started trying to tie them back together. Let's take a listen to the track and then I will talk about it for a little bit. Here you go. <laughs> And there is the loop. All right, so let's see. This was about uh, written around the March of 2013. This is one of the earlier tracks from Pirate 101. I was obviously trying to tie it in with uh, Marleybone from Wizard 101. So the Wizard 101 Marleybone world is kind of that Victorian era. But because of the subject matter, I looked to some of the classic uh, swashbuckling films. Uh, to swash in the 16th century was to you know hit something to make a loud sound with it. And a buckle was like a little shield. So literally it's, you know, swords and shields clanging and people fighting. And in college, uh, we actually studied some of the works by Max Steiner and especially Eric Korngold. And they wrote the score to a lot of these kind of adventurous movies and, and especially the seafaring swashbucklers of the time. So John Williams also uh, credits Eric Korngold as some of his sound for the Star Wars uh, scores. So it made sense that myself, a kid growing up on the Star Wars scores, kind of got some of that, you know, through osmosis. So that uh, probably explains why there is a lot of very traditional instruments here. It's very, you know, Hollywood orchestra. I find uh, spiccato strings to be really especially good at this kind of action score. Spiccato is like, you know, really short strokes with the, with the bow and a very kind of percussive sound. My main spiccato sound is here. <laughs> And this is from Project Sam Symphobia. Sorry if I'm repeating myself, but really, really good at getting the sound of a lot of instruments, you know, quickly. So it really helps you build up. I usually use that as kind of the bed. And then uh, I also pick out some instruments to, to kind of heighten the realism. So this is a viola playing the same line. And it's a smaller number of players and it's a drier sound. 
a little more point to it. You can hear the, the bow kind of really scraping across the strings there. I got some cellos playing the same line as well for some of the lower power in there. Same idea. You can hear more of the bow going on in there. Sounds a little more active. Uh, and then I added for this remix a, a violin sound. up the octave there. See, these other instruments are LA scoring strings and then that, that new violin is uh, from ATO and this is the Adagio Ensemble short sound from their Adagio violin. I really like layering this instrument on top of kind of a more general ensemble sound to really give it some direction. And so the whole uh, string section together. <laughs> the feeling you can hear kind of the the fullness of that bed kind of spiccato sound there's also the higher kind of drier more more point to the violin and viola and, and cello sound in there the woodwinds are also working with the strings there on that line a bit here with the cellos because I have the cellos doing the spiccato part and then also defining the the bass notes with the upper octave that's something that's really common in string writing where the basses will play something the basses don't project a lot the the low frequencies you kind of feel them more than hear them so a lot of times composers will put a cello line an octave up so it's really just there to kind of support the lower notes so this part's obviously just setting up kind of the next bit it's very kind of pensive it's telling you actions actions coming soon there's a choir cheating again here I, I i cheat a lot so i've got the higher strings doing this little so you can see i've done a lot of programming with the mod wheel to kind of get uh get this part to sneak in a little bit because so this little semitone pattern you're going to hear it again over here in the high strings and the choir and the celeste and the piccolo come up with parts sort of retroactively so I obviously i wrote this part first and then I was like, hey, it'd be cool to kind of sneak that in in a different way. So I introduced just a little semitone back and forth here, and then it comes into its own part. So that part wasn't poking through the mix as well uh, as I would like, so I put this, the celeste in to really define the beginning of that note. And it's just a little very subtly in the mix but works works really well uh here's a little sound this is mostly uh just to reinforce this part right in here the melody in here project sam who made the symphobia library that i use all the time they're actually offering some free sounds it's called the free orchestra and they don't have short notes it's just longer kind of legato notes but it's good for playing these longer slower building up themes and it sounds great and it's a nice big sound let's just hear the heroic horn sound here. It's not even full notes, right? But check it out when we put it with the trumpet here. Really about getting that definition of the note at the beginning. And then here, uh, once again, Project Sam, this is Symphobia, the brass parts. And I, I use this for kind of a bed underneath some of the solo instruments here. Send a sample horns in there as well. well up into the next section i've said it before use your mod wheel to get these dynamics in there let's check out what the percussion's got going on there's a lot of stuff so the kodo drums and the battle drum they're both hard hitting tom kind of instruments and so you'll notice that i panned them out in the stereo field a little bit let them both have their their space i really am trying especially the percussion there to experiment a little bit with more with uh, stereo placement create a little bit more room in the mix so 
that's just the Kodo drums, battle drum. There's the accent in there. So that low battle drum is just being used mostly for accents and accompaniment. Here it gets a little more active. There's that period snare, uh, really sounds good. That was kind of more of the snare feel back in the day where just a little looser, it sounded heavier and maybe a little deeper because it was usually real materials being used in it. You know, it was real wood, it was real skin, it was real, you know, maybe gut for the snares. Cymbals and gongs going on here. I don't know, some people in the past have said that I use cymbals too much. <laughs> I, I didn't pay a lot of attention to them, I think. <laughs> This is uh, another Cine Sample project. It's called Cine Crash, and they have rolls and stuff that you actually perform with the mod wheel. All right, so this is definitely some of my John Williams trench run kind of writing. There's a lot of builds and a lot of hits, and it sort of builds, it's building to uh, this end bit, which is where uh, it's just passing around the, the hits and the shots just around to different sections and different combinations of instruments. <laughs> Believe it or not, that is a that's a tough thing to kind of balance because it's a lot of back and forth and a lot of layering to make sure that it's it sounds convincing. Psycho. I found the theme that I think inspired some of this kind of craziness. Uh, when I was first writing Marley Bone, uh, this is the, f the fourth track I wrote for Marley Bone. It sounds like this. So a little bit of that, you know, kind of simple but sort of twisted kind of feel. That's where I, I think I pulled this out of. It's hard to describe the psychology behind some of that, but I think it's so disturbing because it it sounds like, you know, a nice simple theme, but there's just something inherently wrong with it. And I think that puts the listener into uncomfortable territory. Like that that dichotomy between this is childlike, but it's also it, it's wrong. There's some it's, it's kind of indicating to you that, you know, everything should be good, but it's it's not. And just those two those two feelings fighting each other is definitely kind of off putting and, and unsettling. So in an action track like this, you make the the more epic kind of major feel good themes feel better when you can kind of put them off balance, you know, right before that. So here we put them off balance and then we kind of drop back down again in energy and start building up again. <laughs> tone run kind of building up to the next section so check this out over here uh this part the the bass bones and the bassoon are doing this line here and that line's a little bit evocative of uh our, our creepy line back here it sounds a little bit like that but it's it's underneath all these other like shots and stuff and 
back to the loop at the top. All right, I think that's about it for this one. Uh, if you got any comments, please leave them down below. This video was suggested by some some commenters on a previous video. So if there's another track you want to hear from, Wizard 101 or Pirate 101, leave it down below. And I'll definitely do uh, a few more Pirate ones in the mix. I started doing some sheet music for some of the Wizard 101 pieces. If you haven't checked that out, please check that out. It's on my, my website, nelsoneverheart.com. I'll put a link down in the description. Thanks, everybody. Bye.